that he gave his only begotten son Jesus Christ that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have the gift to eternal life that's the plan that God has for each and every one of you you are part of God's creation you are part of God's plan for salvation and God has a plan of salvation for each and every one of you it is the gift that keeps on giving it is called eternal life eternal security and eternal salvation that's the gift that Jesus Christ paid for each and every one of us. For he who knew no sin became sin, so that we do not have to die or live in sin any longer. For he has become our substitutionary sacrifice. He has paid the price for each and every one of you, including myself. He died on Calvary's cross 2100 years ago. He who knew no sin became sin, so that you do not have to live or die in your sin. For you can be free from sin today through confession, through repentance, and through baptism. All you have to do is accept what Jesus Christ did 2100 years ago on the cross at Calvary. He died so that you do not have to die in your sins. You can have forgiveness of sins through His Son Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for you and I so that we do not have to live or die in our sins. We can be free from the penalty of death, the penalty of sin, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. You can have it today, you're just one confession away from salvation, or you're one, make that one heartbeat away from judgment. For the Bible says it's appointed unto all humanity, each and every one of us, to die. And when we die, we will have to face the judgment of God. Your Creator will judge you based on how you live in the body that He made, in His image and in His likeness. You have a responsibility to your Creator as to how you should live. You need to inquire as to what are His requirements. For His requirements are listed in Ten Commandments, and you should be following each and every one of them. I'm here to tell you that if you should happen to die in your sins outside of accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, for the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. He who knew no sin became sin for you and I 2,100 years ago. He went to the cross of Calvary and He died and bled for you and for I. And as a result of that, we now have access to the Father, who is the creator of heaven and earth and everything that dwells in between. That means you and that means me. We belong to God and not to ourselves. We were made for His reasons and for His purpose and for His purpose only. And there are consequences for every action. There is an opposite and equal reaction. That's called consequences. What consequences I'm referring to? The life that you live in the body that your Creator God has given you was fashioned in His likeness and in His image. You have sinned against God simply by being born. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And as a result of that, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And we are all sinners by birth, which is a part of our DNA through Adamic nature. We have all received the bloodline or the DNA of the first man ever created, Adam, and it runs through our veins, and that is sin. Sin runs through your veins even as you walk and stroll this boardwalk today. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and as a result of that, you are in need of forgiveness, for you have a debt that must be paid, and that debt was paid 2100 years ago on the cross of Calvary by one known as Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He paid your debt, he paid my debt, and as a result of that, we all can be free from the penalty of death, which is the penalty of sin. You do not have to live or die in your sins when someone named Jesus Christ has already done that for you. For he is the only propitiation. He is the only sacrifice worthy of repentance. You can have your sins forgiven through His Son Jesus Christ today. 
All you have to do is just confess, repent, believe it, receive it, continue in it, and you will be walking the path that will take you to a place called heaven. That's where you want to go. That's where I am going. You can go there too if you should happen to die before Jesus Christ returns. You can have that hope now, and his hope is for each and every one of you. We live in evil times. These are perilous times in which we live. Do not, I repeat, do not take your lives for granted. For today is yours now, and while you yet have breath in your being, but tomorrow is not promised to you. For you can die on your way home today. You can die in your sleep. And if you die outside of Jesus Christ, for the Bible says the wages of sin is death, and we all have sinned simply by being born, we have sinned against God. And as a result of that, God sent his son Jesus to die as our substitutionary sacrifice, as our propitiation, as our atonement. And as a result of what he done, we can have the gift of eternal life, which comes about eternal security, which comes about eternal salvation. That's the gift that keeps on giving. That's the gift that's going to bless you beyond this world. For this world as you know it is coming to an end sooner if not later. We are living in the last days. These days in which we are living are evil. For we're living in a time of nuclear war and nuclear threat. For nuclear war is coming sooner than later. And my question to you is, where will you run when nuclear war begins? Where will you run from a nuclear fallout? I'm here to tell you that you can't run very far. And if you don't have Jesus Christ as your refuge, as your hope, as your place to run, then you will be lost to your own demise. As a result of that, unfortunately for you, you will die in your sins. When you don't have to die in your sins, you can have your sins forgiven through what Jesus Christ did 2100 years ago on the cross of Calvary. He died and he bled, for there is no, I repeat, there is no remission for sins except through blood sacrifice. And that blood had to be pure blood. That was the only blood that could atone for sins. And the person whose blood was pure was Jesus Christ. He died willingly for you and for I. And as a result of that, we have access to the Father in forgiveness and in repentance. And if you repent, confess Jesus Christ today, you can receive the gift of eternal life, eternal salvation, and eternal security. All three of those can be yours simply by believing in what he did for you and for me. He who knew no sin became sin so that you do not have to die as a result of sin. You can be free from sin through confession and repentance. You need to do that while you still have life in your bodies. For the Bible says it's appointed unto all humanity to die. One day each and every one of you will die. You will face death and it doesn't end at natural death. As a matter of fact, it's just the beginning of your life. It's just the beginning of when you will stand before your Creator God and give an account for how you lived in your body. And if you did not live according to God's commandments, then I'm here to tell you it is not too late for you because you are still alive and you have the opportunity to now walk in His statues and in His judgments. That's what you can do today through confession and repentance in the plan of his salvation. God has a plan of salvation and that was enacted since the very first day man has sinned in the Garden of Eden. And as a result of that one man's sin, sin passed into all. Each and every one of us was born in sin and we are shaped in its iniquity. And as a result of that, we stand before a holy and righteous God and will have to give an account as to how we lived in the body that he said was made after his image and his likeness. God created you for a purpose and you must find out before it is eternally too late what that purpose is. I'm here to tell you that purpose is for you to live according to how he has set his standards. His standards are the Ten Commandments. Those are the standards in which you must live. You cannot keep the Ten Commandments outside of Jesus Christ. No one can. 
As a result of that, when you sin, you can go before God in the person of Jesus Christ and have your sins washed away. It's just that simple, but the only way you can have your lives changed is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ while he is here and extending that opportunity and gift to you today. Don't let this gift pass you by, for life is not promised to you. You may not wake up tomorrow, and if you die outside of knowing Jesus Christ, I'm here to tell you, you have gone to a place that your heart does not want to go. That place is called hell. You do not want to go there, and you don't have to go there. God made provisions that you don't go there through his son, Jesus Christ. The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for you, and for I, he died for both of us, for all humanity, and as a result of that, we now can have repentance through forgiveness. All we have to do is confess, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. I am a sinner, and I am in need of repentance and forgiveness. And you have access to God the Father through his Son, Jesus Christ, right now. Right now, and it is available to you. Life is not promised to you tomorrow. So don't, don't put off tomorrow what you can do today. Today is your opportunity. Don't let this opportunity pass you by, for it may not be available tomorrow simply because you may not be here tomorrow. If you think that you can add one life, one day, one second to your life, I'm here to tell you, you cannot do that. Only God can do that. And as a result of that, you need to fall on your knees and ask God to forgive you for the sins in which you've committed in your body. For we have all sinned against God and fallen short of his glory, and we are in need of repentance. We are in need of forgiveness, and that has been made available for you over 2,100 years ago in the person of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he who knew no sin, became sin for you and for I, so that we do not have to die in our sins. We can live and have forgiveness through repentance for what he done 2100 years ago for you and for I. Don't let an opportunity of a lifetime like this pass you by, for it may not be here tomorrow simply because you may not be here tomorrow. For your life is as a tiny vapor, it appears for an instant and then it is gone. That's how quick your life can end. And if your life should end that quickly and you die in your sins, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. You do not want to die in your sins when there was someone by the person of Jesus Christ who died for you. All you have to do is accept what he did for you and you can have the gift of eternal life. Heaven can be your home. But if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life today, your home is hell. That's where your home is and that's where you're headed. But you do not have to go there when heaven is made for those who repent, confess, and believe in what Jesus Christ did for you. You can have heaven as your home. It can be your gift and it can give you eternal peace. It can give you eternal bliss. Eternal happiness is what you can have today. It's available to each and every one of you. There is no one who is excluded. It is all inclusive. God is concerned about every human being that walks the face of this earth. And as a result of that, it is extended to each and every one of you. There is no respect to persons. There is no partiality. There is no favoritism. God loves you all the same. And as a result of that, you all have the same access to forgiveness and repentance through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, 2100 years ago, went to the cross at Calvary. He died and he bled. Why? Because he was actually dying for you and for me. And as a result of that, we now have access to the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, and we can receive forgiveness through repentance in Jesus Christ. And if you repent right now, while you have that opportunity, you can receive the gift of eternal salvation. Eternal life can be yours today. You're just one confession away from salvation, or you're one make that one heartbeat away from judgment.
I'm here to tell you that life is not promised to you tomorrow. Life is not promised to you next week. Life is not promised to you next month or next year. Life as you know it can end. That's just how quick it can be over. It is over just in a matter of seconds. And if you should happen to die in your sins, I'm here to tell you there is no hope for you. But your hope now is in the fact that you're alive and you can receive the one who died for you and for me. His name is Jesus Christ. The Bible says he who knew no sin became sin so that you do not have to die or live in sin any longer. All you have to do is repent, confess Lord Jesus. He who knew no sin will come into your heart and forgive you of your sins and he will give you a different change make that a different change in your lifestyle and in the way you are headed for right now the road and path in which you walk is leading you to a place where your heart does not want to go that place is called hell you do not want to go there is not a boardwalk stroll it's not a place to dip your feet in water it's not a place to tan it's not a place to buy popcorn soda pop it's not a place to go see a reality tv show that's a place of torment torture fire hell and brimstone you don't have to go there nor does god want you to go there your creator made you to go to heaven when you die that's where he wants you to go and the only way that you can be on that path or on that road is through his son jesus christ if you accept what he did for you 2100 years by dying in your stead by shedding his blood and giving up his life you can have that gift that will put you on a path to eternal life and your home will be heaven that's the place where god wants all of us to go when we die but if you choose not to accept his plan of salvation and you accept the one that you're on I'm here to tell you your plan is leading your heart to a place where you don't want to go. That place is not a picnic. That place is not a place where you want to wind up for eternity. When you can go somewhere, Jesus Christ said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am you may be also. In my Father's house there are many mansions, and if it were not so, I would have told you. But I come back to receive you unto myself, and you shall be with me forevermore in paradise, in heaven. That's where you can go just by confessing and asking God for forgiveness of your sins today. They will be washed away, cast into the sea of forgiveness, never to be remembered ever again. That's the opportunity that your creator God has for you, sir. He has for you, man, the gift of eternal life is yours. All you have to do is repent, confess, Lord Jesus, thank you for what you've done dying for me on the cross at Calvary 2,100 years ago. He who knew no sin became sin so that you do not have to live or die in your sins any longer. You do not have to be a slave to sin any longer. God has broke the chains of slavery through what Jesus Christ did 2,100 years ago at a place called Calvary. He who knew no sin became sin. He died so that you don't have to die or live in your sins any longer. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have the gift of eternal life. That's the gift that keeps on giving, people. You can have it. It's simple. All you have to do is accept what Jesus Christ done for you and I. He died on the cross. He shed his blood. He died and he rose again on the third day. And now he is seated at the right hand of the Father with all power given unto him. And he has the power to save you from you. You need to be saved from yourselves. Yourselves are leading you to a place where your heart does not want to go. You just don't realize that yet, but the path in which you on is the path that is labeled the walking dead. You don't have to be the walking dead. When I say walking dead, it's your sins. Your sins are taking you to your death, but you can have forgiveness of sins and it will take you to life, life more abundantly, life eternal. That's what Jesus Christ is offering each and every one of you today through repentance and confession. 
You can have your sins forgiven, wiped away. Your slate can be wiped clean through what Jesus Christ did 2,100 years at a place called Calvary's Cross. He who knew no sin became sin for you and for I. He died so that you don't have to die or live in sin any longer. For there is a payment for sin. It's called the wages of sin is death. You do not want to die in your sins when there's someone by the name of Jesus Christ who died already in your place. How are you, sir? He made a way for each and every one of you. You can have it today. It's yours. It's free for the asking. You're just one confession away from salvation or you're one, make that one, heartbeat away from judgment. For the Bible says it's appointed unto all men to die and then cometh the judgment. Life as you know it, is soon to end every waking day there is no guarantee that you will wake with the rising of the sun this may be your last sunset and if it is and you die i should hope that you did the right thing the wise thing the only thing is to give your lives to jesus christ while you still have life in your body for it is eternally too late if you die without jesus christ while you live. If you die in your sins, the Bible says you are headed to a place called hell. Hell is not a boardwalk stroll. It is not a place to go get a tan. It is not a place to dip your feet and cool off in the ocean. It is not a place to buy popcorn or soda pop. It is not a place to go to a theater. Hell is just the opposite of those things. It is fire, brimstone, torment, and torture. That's what hell is, and that's where your mind is taking your heart. You don't have to go there when God has made a way for you to escape the punishment and consequences of sin. Sin can be ratified for you today. It can be rectified for you today. It can be washed clean for you today. All you have to do is accept what Jesus Christ did for each and every one of you. He loved you so much that he gave his life on the cross. He bled and died so that you don't have to be in sin any longer. You can have your sins forgiven through what Jesus Christ did at the cross of Calvary. He did it for you because he loves you, ma'am. He loves you so much that he wants to see you in heaven. That's what he has in store for you if you would accept his plan of salvation today because tomorrow is not promised. Don't let it be said too late, sir. Don't let it be said too late, ma'am. Your opportunity to receive the greatest gift ever offered is here and available to you today. All you have to do is believe in your heart and receive it and confess it. Confess Lord Jesus and he will give you the gift of eternal life. Heaven can be the path in which you ride, the path in which you walk. That's the only path that's going to lead you to heaven. All other paths will lead you to a place called hell. You are headed in the wrong direction. God wants to come in and put you on the right direction. For the Bible says, broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, but narrow is the way that leadeth to eternal life, and there are few who find it. While I'm here just for the few, who's willing to find it. If you're looking for eternal security, which simply means you're not concerned about today, tomorrow, or next week, next year, or death because your life is hidden in Jesus Christ, you are absolutely 100% correct. You have eternal security. You do not have to fear what comes or when or how you are in Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, you are in the ark of safety. You are a part of his covenant. And as a result of that, heaven will be your eternal home. You can have the gift that keeps on giving. It will give you life now more abundantly. And it will give you life to come, eternal life, eternal salvation, eternal security. It can all be yours simply by confessing, repenting, and believing in what Jesus Christ did for you 2,100 years ago on the cross of Calvary. He did it for all humanity. No one is excluded. Everyone is included. All you have to do is follow his plan of salvation. This is an opportunity that God has given each and every one of you. You can, of course, deny it. 
you can refuse it. That's totally up to you. God will not force himself upon you. You are free will, free moral agent. As a result of that, you make your choices. But for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. That happens to be consequences. Everything you say and do has an action. As a result of that, you deal with those consequences. And if you refuse God's plan of salvation, there are consequences that you will have to face. They're not good consequences. I'm here to tell you there are bad consequences. Don't be bad when you can be good. You can be good only if you accept Jesus Christ today. He will give you the goodness and righteousness that he has for each and every one of you. You can stand in his righteousness and not in your own. For in your own righteousness, there are nothing but filthy rags. The Bible says our works are as filthy rags compared to the righteousness of God. You need the righteousness of God to even stand before him. And the righteousness of God that can stand before God is Jesus Christ. If you are in Jesus Christ, you can stand before God and know that you have escaped punishment. The punishment that is upon every one of us since the day we were born is death. You are the walking dead. Each and every one of you are walking to your death. Outside of Jesus Christ, that's where you are headed. You are the walking dead headed to your graves. And that doesn't end there. It is an eternal grave. And in that eternal grave is torment, torture, and fire and brimstone. You do not want to go there and you do not have to go there while there is life in your bodies today. You have the opportunity to confess, repent, and accept what Jesus Christ did for you. And you can have eternal life eternal security and eternal salvation you don't have to worry about what's coming because what is coming is not nice what's coming is nuclear war that's what's coming it's a reality you see it as much as i see it every waking day it's on your news every waking day you see the threat of nuclear war well one day it is coming and i ask of you where will you run where will you hide when nuclear war begins what is your hiding place? How strong is your hiding place when nuclear war begins? You can hide, you can run. No matter how deep you go, you will not be able to run from the fallout of nuclear radiation. That radiation has a purpose and its purpose is to kill and destroy. I'm here to tell you that the Bible says one third of all humanity will die in the next world war. I repeat, one third of all humanity will die in the next world war. One third. There are 7.5 billion people walking the face of the earth. And I'm here to tell you 2.5 billion people will die in the next world war. And of that 2.5 billion people who will die in the next world war, 60 to 90 percent will be innocent civilians much like yourselves you may be one of those fatalities that will lose his or her life in the next world war but i'm here to tell you there is an intervention there is an escape route there is a way to escape the penalty and the judgment of god that is coming upon this country in the world and that is through his son jesus christ of nazareth he is your only hope for he said i am the way the truth and the life no man cometh unto the father but by me for the bible said there is no other name given under heaven whereby we can be saved but through the name of jesus christ he is your answer for he said in his word that he is the lamb of god that taketh away the sins of the world your sins and my sins can be taken away and never brought up in your face ever again. Those sins can be cast into a lake which will never be brought up in your face again. You can have eternal security, eternal salvation, and eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ, today. It is being offered to you today. He is knocking at the doors of your heart if you would only stop, look, and listen. 
and you will hear the very voice of God knocking at your heart and you will then understand his plan of salvation and then all you have to do is receive it by confessing, repenting, believing and continuing in his son Jesus Christ who will empower you with the power to live a holy, consecrated, dedicated life unto God. That's what is necessary for you to spend eternity in heaven. That's the only choice you have. There's no other one. This is it, people. This is your opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. Don't let it be said eternally too late. For life is not promised to you. You can certainly die tomorrow. You can die in the next five minutes. That's how uncertain life is for each and every one of us. And I'm here to tell you that if 